Fans over soup with Ryan and Portico and Sully Smith. We're here with Lost in Space Camp. Hello, everybody. Hey, guys. Austin. Yes. Ethan and That's Bailey. That's right. And I'm proud of myself for, for remembering everyone's oh, names. I, yeah. I would not have been able to do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm garbage yeah. at names. And yeah, Space is, yeah. is here with Sully and Ryan. Right? This is yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess from uh, from right to left. No, I guess what what does everybody play? I play the bass guitar. I play the drums. Um, Badly. I um I I do the the get Finland and I do like the, the high pitch. Yeah, sad yelling, um, taking back Sunday impression. Yeah, you, well, you, you, you said you said last night uh, was it like it's an emo rush and yeah, I, I never I never had th- thought about it, but that's actually a really good description. It's a recent realization I had. Yeah, and, like I used to explain to us that like people be like, oh, what do you sound like? Because you can't be like, oh man, we're like kind of shoegazy, kind of mathy, kind of like early thousands emo post rock. It's like I always tell people well, we sound kind of like sad and fast angry like Pink Floyd but mm-hmm. about a month ago I was like <laughs> emo rush we're mm-hmm. emo rush. rush and the three piece thing like, that, feels like, yeah. that feels like such a compliment even though it shouldn't I mean no, well, that's well, cool I, yeah what? Rush is good I, I, yeah, I, I, I dig it I dig it objectively the history is important they were, they were no important. I mean that you can't like describe what it is offhand means you guys have an original so I think so like when I listen yeah. to y'all stuff like it's we're trying re- I don't know that hard. Yeah, and like it's awesome. It, and I, I it's original you, sound. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. hearing that. That's like, yeah. what we're going. Yeah. When, when, yeah. when people ask me, we sound like I, I, I've always struggled. Always struggled. Oh, it's mm-hmm. horrible. And it's like, and in that moment, I'm always like, well, that means that we sound like us. But like, it's it's hard to promote yourself to strangers. Yeah, especially sure. strangers who may not know what math rock is or what yeah. shoegaze is or what album. Oh or god, it, it does it's end up feeling. It like, does end up feeling. Like, 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 really pretentious to be yeah. like I don't know I, don't, <laughs> For sure. I don't think you'd even understand it honestly and so that's yeah, why right. I was like I'd be like, like emo rush <laughs> and that's what it's just like emo rush yeah, like, yeah. I don't I don't mean that to like pat myself <clears throat> on the back I mean that that is just literally difficult to describe like, yeah it's, it's uh I've never heard anything like it and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing and I can't just like, be like oh like we're like Don Caballero but like oh, just more emo and maybe like a little jazzier because people don't mm. know Don Cavalier. There's they just so many things. Cab, they don't know Terry mm. Yeah, at, or, yeah. There's just so many things where I can't just be like, oh, we sound like this, and like you, you know, see. Death Cab for Cutie is a big influence on me. But like, we only sound like Death Cab like two percent of the time, mm-hmm. if even. Uh, so it's hard to even like throw that like in in the way. And also, you run the things where you go, yeah, if you, we sound like My Bloody Valentine, and they think you're talking about Bullet for My Valentine. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, and then they show up for your show, and they're like, this isn't metalcore, what's happening? <laughs> but yeah, uh, talking about how we describe ourselves, I think uh, Nicole put it best when she said math pop post rock. Um, math that, that, pop post rock. That, that, that is the one that I've stuck with. That's the classic combo of four words for Space Camp. Yeah, and then when I'm, we're talking to people that Music may not... Awesome be as aware of math rock or whatever i'm like yeah dumb like, loser music nerds dumb loser music nerds we sound like pink floyd smash together with rush that was uh one of christina's co-workers showed up and he's um an older fella and he was just like oh man you guys sound like rush but you also sound like pink floyd and i'm like that's yeah that's, that's a good way to describe it, it sure it why not interesting like demographically how you get described because a certain age of people is like oh it's like it's like Genesis and Rush yeah. and like yes, that. but like for a long time, a lot of the people who come to our shows were people who were in their like thirties and early thirties, like like, mm-hmm. like like mid mid to early thirties, and it's because we sound like a lot of bands that they grew up listening to. That's in college. true. So like, because we we're really influenced by a lot of like late like ninety nine two thousand two thousand one bands. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I listened to like Ben Folds and like Q and I U like <clears throat> like I but, probably should venture out a little more recently, but I, I I've just been kind of. I, I don't want to. Uh, I like sure. that era. I'm yeah. not. I can't get away from the stuck in my boxes. I like them. from the hey. early 2000s Discord stuff. Yeah, it's hard I, not to. We're firmly if we. It's one of those things where we're listening to Q and not you and other things on Discord, and it's like, why didn't we exist in the early yeah. 2000s? Why wasn't ah? Damn it! I was like three years old. This is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> But at the same time, it's like it's such a hodgepodge of sounds that it could only really exist now, now more so. Yeah, yeah you're that definitely so actually, much you know disparate what I mean? influences because you know yeah. these two talk a lot about the math, math and whatever influences mm-hmm. that emo whatever. But my background is not exactly the same. Like I was brought up mm-hmm. on. <laughs> 
country music, like Dang, 94.9. Oh, I was man. listening oh, yeah. to gobs of, of Kenny Chesney and Dang, Randy Travis and Brad Paisley and all that junk, and Rascal Flatts. I just want to say, my dad also listened to it. I just tuned it out. No, <laughs> I, I love that stuff I jammed on, I, dude. And there was a few pops I like, because I'm not... School, yeah. And you get the Foo Fighters, and you get Incubus. My my background oh, yeah. is, is a lot rockier, you might say. Definitely mm-hmm. more on the, I would say, mainstream as well. So you like 4-4. Four, four. That's... I, I mean, 4-4, four, four, yes. But I don't know. For me, rock is more complicated. Because, like... One of my biggest influences as a drummer is the drummer. Ah, I honestly I should know his name, but I don't. Uh-oh. Incubus's drummer. Okay. That man is a fantastic drummer, and you you can't call Incubus anything but rock. But it's like certainly not. But you know, I think you don't think about ACDC and mm-hmm. Incubus being the same sort of thing. But you call them both rock, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just his drumming is just wild. Like, They're good musicians. Song. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, the way I describe Incubus to people is like. Uh, if if uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers were good, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I yeah to bounce off of Ethan a little bit. Uh, bands like <laughs> band, bands like Incubus and stuff. I, it's one of those things where it's like we lose all the cool points with this. But yeah, definitely really like the basis from Incubus. Really like a lot of their albums. I mean, their first one, the album that has Stellar on it, and then mm. A Crow Left of the Murder are like the three that I'm quite a big fan of, and. Yeah, the bass yeah. playing. I think there's two. Di- I think Crow Left the Murder has a different bassist, but he's still quite good, in my opinion. Their drummer is nuts. Like you listen, go ahead, do it right now. Pause the podcast, okay? Listen to the song <laughs> Z Z Devil, okay? Oh, God, Off of Crow Left of the Murder. That drumming is it has more personality than just about any other drum track I can just think of off the top of my head because mm. it's not about technicality, obviously, but like there's so much personality dripping off of that drum line. It's so good. And while yeah, you're, it's it's that's, that's a good drum, but I definitely need to hear that now. And while you're listening to that song, skip uh, either forward or backwards to Six Sad Little World and realize I've stole most of my roles from that one song. <laughs> yeah, on that same note, try try not, after listening to our music, listening to anything by like Under Oath or uh, like The Almost, any of that stuff, because you'll realize I accidentally stole most of my stuff from them as well. Mm-hmm. What are we eating today? Yeah, actually. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, that's oh, everyone know, yeah. All right. That's what okay, it looks like. We're eating. Okay, so I got a dim sum platter. I shared some wasabi shumai with, with all of us. I, I Thank, you. A, yes. a Thank you. I ate a wonton to Brian. It's and then yummy. I ate two soft pork buns really quickly, ate some other shrimp shumai really quickly, and I'm now eating a shumai soup. I just went full dumpling today. I mean, um, hey, sometimes you have to do the dumpling. Yeah, and it's really, it's really good. <clears throat> Don't look really good. Bring dim like, sum no to shit. Roanoke. Please. Please sign our petition. We want dim sum in Roanoke. It's Absolutely. So good. Please. Yeah, yeah, more more Asian food for sure. Please. Oh, and, yeah, it, it, please. It's, it's in a miso broth. It's a shumai oh, and a miso broth with a mm-hmm. flash of egg and a little bit of scallion. There, there you go. go. Bailey brought over his entire kitchen. Uh, well, uh, uh, his his hobo, his hobo kitchen. Now. <laughs> well, I, I feel rude using other people's kitchens, so I brought over some of my camping cookware. So I got my little my little pot and my little camping cup, and I am at this point in time balling on a budget by necessity. So I went to the dollar store and saw that they had chili ramen for mm-hmm. sale, and I bought as many as I could afford at the time. Uh, so I've been munching on that for a good while i've figured out how to cook it up to where it almost feels like a good meal so you <laughs> cook up the ramen i like to ignore the directions and pour the sauce not the sauce the seasoning in while it's boiling let it boil get it in the noodles yeah. oh yeah and then you pour the broth into your second cup i then pour a bunch of like the noodles are like dry sitting in the bottom of the pan at this point put in some soy sauce some poison sauce some uh, sweet and sour type of hot sauce I have kicking around. Ginger. I grew some Thai chilies I throw in there. Uh, fry. Let that fry. Up. Oh, some sesame oil. Forgot about that. That's very important. Very important. Oh, yeah. Let that fry up for a little bit. Let the sugar caramelize a bit. And then put the broth back in. And after that, apply a little bit of uh, toasted sesame seeds. You brought all those things. The toasted sesame seeds. Yes, I the... did. It's Well, it's back in my bag. That's incredible. 
Oh no, it's, it's pain in the ass. <laughs> that's that's, that's devotion. I, I was gonna say that entire uh, you know if the uh, Food Network is listening, uh, uh, Bailey is. Uh, no, uh, I am available. <laughs> he is. I, I will host a TV show. Are you Do not right? threaten me with the good. TV. If you uh, want the bad version of Alton Brown's show, I can do it. I will be you there. You want good eats? I will give you bad <laughs> eats. <laughs> give you cheap and kind of okay eats. I feel like the only way you can make that work is if you just spend the entire time screaming at. <laughs> like, so a mix of uh, Terry Crews, like so a little bit of uh, a little bit of Alton Brown, a little bit of Terry Crews, a little bit of How to Basic. Yes. Yeah, a, yes. Yeah, yes. a lot of How to Basic. I, I would even say like That's like it. early Zach Galifianakis, like featuring on like um, Tim and Eric, like that sort of oh, like, nice. his director character. Oh, where okay. He just screams at the drop of the hat and cries. Like that's <laughs> Gen Z will love this. Like. uh well, I mean, I think essentially you're gonna eventually have to go to Flavor Town too. I mean, like, mm. it, oh, you have, I, I, you can just look, dress up like a that. one-way yeah. ticket because you're not coming <laughs> back. Just, I'm gonna, so, I, you can't. It's called, but it's called Favor Town, though. Favor Town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see what I'm. The best thing. That's how I'm saying you have Favor Town. I got a favor for you. Shut up! And he yells all of this. That's. That's a good. Uh, I can see it. And I, once in every episode, he throws some sort of insanely high Scoville level pepper. Something in someone's eyes. With a <laughs> like, yo, PA, come here. And you just like, now you can't see. the last dab? <laughs> you want to try the last dab? Fuck. <laughs> in your eyes. A <laughs> little bit of epic meal time. A little bit of uh, Eric Andre. Just, dude, R.I.P. Harley, dude. Amen. Amen. I don't, I don't know. Not well, well, he's the guy from Epic Meal Time. Is it really? Yeah, oh. that's his name, Harley. Well, he's a boxer now, I guess. But rest in peace to rest in peace to Epic Meal Time. Yeah, but you're I'm not familiar with that. Well. Yeah. Epic Meal Time. Oh, those were the dudes that would just make. It'd be like they go to McDonald's, get like thirty Big Macs and a liter of Mac sauce, and then make a lasagna out of the Big Macs, out of like Baconators, and then mm. wrap the whole thing in bacon, mm. pour the Mac sauce on it, cook <laughs> it, and then would just be a montage Jesus of Christ. them just like. Like dudes just holding like four cheeseburgers in both of their hands, munching on it. Oh, four and Jack Daniels disgusting. all over the place. It was <laughs> oh, it's nasty. It's just awful. horrific. <laughs> but it was. I'm losing my appetite. But it was fantastic when you're in middle school, and it's like, let's see what Epic Meal Time hosted today. This will right. be epic. I will love it. This is so good. Yeah, it's from the <laughs> era of the internet where people unironically describe things as epic. Epic, legendary. It's funny what you think is epic or legendary in hindsight like or <laughs> looking back it's like yeah that was really dumb yeah mm-hmm. i think i think that's what adulthood is is realizing you've been stupid your entire life you know no i think yeah, that's what being an american is about you turn 25 and it's like <laughs> wow now i can't digest things as well and i'm and i can see how stupid i used to be and then you yeah. turn 26 and go oh my god i can't believe i thought that when i was 25 <laughs> Yeah, and then you do that rinse and repeat until you die. Until you never over. change any of the habits you hold. Just no, no, no. Yeah. You don't like, change. Man, you I hate the rolling. man I was <laughs> last year. And just rinse and repeat. Yeah, it's... You know, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. Nope, it's just a, a steady decline into, uh, you know, just a beer belly and... Uh, yeah. Not for Ethan. Eating Doritos no, for oh, breakfast. Ethan, I, I, Ethan started going to the gym. He he actually did it. I, like, we talk about it, Ethan did it. And what? I'm like, no, Damn. here's here's the shtick, Okay. Have someone who knows better than you if you want. Okay, here's your fitness tip for the day. To actually, like, you want to get fit, you want to get in shape, here's the key. Have a friend who already has good habits and knows how to do it and get a program. Do a program. So you don't have to walk into the gym and be like, what in tarnation am I supposed to do to actually be strong? Like, all you need is a pal who knows better than you and a routine. It's not that difficult. Mm, that's essentially it's discipline. I, it's I mean, you you also have to learn how to say to yourself, "Hey, you feel like trash, do it anyway." Stupid. That yeah, right. For me, um, so I signed up for a half marathon <clears throat> because all my friends were doing it, and I'm like, "Well, I can't, I can't not do that." And I'm like, "Well, I can't not do it now. All my buds are doing it. I have to do it." So that, and also they all are accomplished runners, so I'm like, well, they know better than me. I guess I'll start running with them. That being said, I I. Started training like last week, went for a run, did like a half mile, and I'm like, I'm gonna die. This is the worst. So it's hard. We're, yeah. we're at rock bottom. It's, it's, hard. it's actually hard. Getting started with cardio, if you haven't done it like I regularly, yeah. 
It's funny. just it's oh, tough. Oh, because yeah. once you get big and muscular, that's the only like, fun work we have. Yeah. Cardio becomes even harder. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's like I <laughs> it's used to be able to run a couple miles. I mean, that's, what, that's what I did in high school. I had a lot of soccer. And yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I was never like, but I was it's the, trim. I was sure. so trim in high school. No one would know because I'm a. But, like, I was like, if I was to remove my shirt, though, it was like, oh. Right. Good for you, Austin. Um, And then I stopped, and then just, you know, you. Yeah. You stopped doing like, soccer. Because, like, yeah. at the high school I went to, it was like, we were ran to death. And so, like, I have, not so much now, but, like, so, in high school, I, I had, like, chronic back problems because we ran so much that, like, all of the team was in the trainer's office before practice. And, like, the trainer would, like, she had to Did come they out. have you running on the track or on dirt? Everything. Oh, good. So she, she came out a few times and was like, hey, you need to stop doing this. All your players are, like, their bodies are deteriorating because of how much you're making. Literally he's just like, broken. you don't know what we're talking about. You're and he's like, no, kidding. like, this is not good. And it's because he, his idea was, like, we could outrun, like, the other soccer teams. We just win. But, like, that's not how it works. He oh. was a football coach. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Oh. Yeah. But I looked yeah. amazing. And then I just <laughs> stopped running as much as I used to. And, like, I don't do cardio as much as, I, as you know, as much as I was. Because I don't even know. We were running more than, the, like, the entire track team. Even the long-distance runners. Like, mm-hmm. It's the best for you. But it, it, the thing yeah, is, like, yeah. when I go hiking, especially a piece of otter, I just want to run it. Oh. it down. Like, I just, that's all I want well, to do. hiking has become so hard. Hikes are so hard once you have, like, a little bit of muscle on your frame. It's like, this takes more air than anything I've ever done in my entire mm. life. Hiking is hard. I don't yeah. have, see, that's like, I don't have, like, hiking, cycling, <clears throat> no problem. That's why I thought, okay, I can start running. Like, I can bike for miles and miles and miles, no problem. I can hike, and it's not an issue. I'm like, I should be able to run a little bit. And no, does That's not tough. translate no. at all. Yeah. It is a completely it's different It's not like skill. running when we were, like, seven. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, with yeah, carrying an adult human body like, around yeah. and, like, running, it's awful. Yeah. See, that's why I, I have never <laughs> changed my height or proportion since I was 16. So, like, oh, there you go. Yeah, that, that helps. Yeah, just stop growing. <laughs> just, just, stop, just stop growing. Fitness tip for the day: Stop growing. Just, you know. That's the main thing. You're just gonna need to stop growing, stop changing. I mean, if you are a teenager that's small and wiry right now, just stop now. Break on kid. Stop eating. Eat two or three meals a day. Have one every other day. Eat nothing but like a slice of white bread and coffee, so that way you stunt your growth and you'll and stay, skulls. And you'll stay great. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need to start smoking. <laughs> smoking and dip. Yeah. Bananas, right? Uh, it, like banana peels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got banana peels. If you know what's good for you, know, the man is moving, the man is moving, and I'm glad I'm building all fat, you know. And, <laughs> and then essentially just get that one poster of the uh, Bob Marley, yeah, one love, you know, and there then you know. Yeah. or that one of like that uh, chess set that's like you look at it, it's kind of like 3D. Oh, oh god, yeah. 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 yeah, the MC Escher sort of deal. Yes, uh-huh. yes, very good. A lot of you just pack your pipe full of fresh ginger, and you're good, not powdered. <laughs> yeah, I do really love MC Escher. So this is not well for me. <laughs> if you want, listen. If you want to get real wild, you put that ginger and nutmeg with a little bit of that banana peel. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <You're great. laughs> I feel like he's like like a really like sophisticated <laughs> smoothie. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of sounds like you're describing a nice. Yeah, it doesn't sound like bad actually. Yeah. Just using cooking ingredients. <laughs> Where did it happen? Did not cook. <clears throat> oh, this so, is fun. Uh, yes, it has to. I mean, we haven't even gotten to like. Yeah, we haven't the questions yet. Yeah, <laughs> fan, fan right, related. We'll, we'll, let's we'll talk, let talk let about. Let's talk about music. We'll answer them routinely. <laughs> 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 let's talk <laughs> about it. Oh, I mean, like this is whatever direction you like. If you give us an inch, we're gonna take a mile. We're oh, gonna start running. Well, so. uh, this is honestly this this is awesome. So I don't like it's every one of us got the ADHD. Oh, hey, it it happens. Good, all the good acronyms. I don't know what HD is. I got 80 of them, boy. Oh, man. I got 80 HDs. ADD, OCD, BBC. <laughs> oh, my God. British like, Broadcasting Company. Yeah, yeah. Right, oh, I right. love Top Gear. Uh, uh, or, you know, you know, the, uh, but... Look it on some oh, other yeah. sites. It's, uh, you know, it's, yeah, things get interesting. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> calm, calm down with the acronyms. You can't push that metaphor too far. It gets weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, who, Austin, Austin, what is the, uh, who started the band and what's what's the history of yeah, the band? Yeah, okay. technically, he's the only original member. Yeah, technically. So, so, I started this group with, um, 
uh, a friend of mine, Ben, he is actually like a distant cousin of mine. Um, so I think I was a, we started, we started jamming, I think I was a junior or senior. Um, and then we started to consistently meet up my senior year of high school, and uh, it was me, a <coughs> friend, and our friend William. And William happens to be my brother. Yeah. <laughs> so again, small, small, just very small close. World. And so like, we're, at this point, we, we come up with a band name, and like, the, like the band name is actually it's a reference. This is really funny, but uh, it, it's a, it's a reference to a Fallout Boy song. It's called Homesick at Space Camp. And at first, I was like, Lost at Space Camp. I was like, No, Lost in Space Camp. I was like, That's what we're gonna do. And I was in yeah. Bristol at the time when I came up with the band name. And then we got back and we started to hit it, and we were like, gonna get like geared up for our, like you know my senior year, like talent show. And we were writing some. I was it was doing this like I wrote this part where like me and the bassist were gonna do it in rounds before we came back together and did like a like a verse or a chorus thing, and and like how we do a space camp is like I don't and, I, and every now and then it has to be that way it's fine but I, I like to just come up with either a whole song of my own sections or like I have a riff I have a riff I have a chorus I don't know how to get from here to here help me write the next parts and so waiting with the original like lineup I wanted to write together and um, we our bassist was like yo that like that's it's too weird. Like, that's not accessible enough. Like, people are going to be turned off by how, like, strange... It's not even it wasn't weird, but it was just I'm making a bass player play a lead part with another lead part. Like, and he, and he kind of went on his tirade, and I kind of looked at Ben, and I was just like, you're at You know man. what, man? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not or something. And then, like, he leaves, and looked at, I looked at Ben, and I'm like, so we're not inviting him next week, are you? He's like, no. And I was like, mm. okay. I, I let him know, but, like, and then um, we did some like instrumental stuff at some like like local house shows, and um, Bailey was a good friend of my of my wife now, and I knew Bailey was a really good bass player, and I tried to get him to play guitar with us actually, <laughs> and he was like, oh, "Hell no, brother! No, 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 you, no, 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 no!" And so he joined up, and at that time our songs were there's no there was a completely instrumental, and like it was very very improvised. Like it'd be like the song structure was like this riff, this riff, I don't know, this riff, this riff, <laughs> I don't know, and yeah. we were just. But the thing is, is like some of those some of those shows were really cool because <laughs> there was that improvisation of like kind of in the moment uh, element, and like we I saw say people when the asses come out. Say that out, that but, yeah. uh, that kind of spirit lives on. It does. Yeah, we we so there, there's some small there's mm-hmm. some small places mm-hmm. that, and so, of course, in between the songs, if we try to flesh things out to sound like there there's something other than just waiting for one of us to tune, but um, there's fluidity. That's where that jazziness kind of comes in mm-hmm. a little bit. I don't like yeah. improv. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, but then, um, then there was like us, and then Bailey went to college, and then it was just me and Ben just making like emo in my like shed. And then Bailey came back, and we started playing shows again. And then Ben was like, "Oh, I have to go finish college." So he went to like Radford, and Ethan just. And finished. ironically, I had just quit the yeah. post office. I had a long stint as a mailman. Oh, two years. Uh, and, uh, I was like, this is the worst thing ever. I'm going back to college, and that freed up enough time for me to have lined up as being a new drummer. It's, it's funny right. you say that. I work for the post office. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's... Uh, I get to talk to Sully every day. I check my P.O. box. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do not highly recommend uh, being a mail carrier. It's a, a dangerous, exhausting, many hours job. Unless you just are, you love walking all day outside every day, no matter what the conditions are. That, and there are those people, that's not like a myth, but uh, if you're not into that, I wouldn't recommend the post office. Not <laughs> no, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not for everybody, and uh, yeah, you definitely have, yeah. yeah. You're not a mail carrier. I you're am a, not a, I, I... I am one of the lucky few who get to clean the toilets and right. uh, oh, yes. grab the trash. That is, that is the holy grail of the post office, honestly. Yeah. People talk about getting a custodial job all the time. It sounds pretty office. chill. It's it's very chill. Yeah. Oh, I I would eventually wipe that up. You don't you don't, don't feel like you have to clean up. <laughs> I just don't know what is water and what is like some sort of like ponzu sauce. Your, your yeah. thing is is dripping actively. That's I am actively right. dripping. But yeah, I wanted to. So I'm, I'm gonna yeah. rewind a little bit. Oh yeah, talk about Austin. Uh, yeah. So after their original bassist had left the band, I had seen Austin and Ben perform at a couple house shows, and Ben and I were decent buds when we were in high school. So I was like, "Hey, man, you guys sounded really good at that show the other night. Do you need a bass player?" And Ben was like, "Oh, I don't know, man. I'll talk to Austin." So he talked to Austin, showed up to a jam session, 
Austin sussed me out a little bit, realized I could play my instrument all right, and then was like, okay, yeah, this guy's cool. And that's when we started playing together. And for the longest time, we had a very consistent um, jam schedule. We, we, we're not booking shows or nothing. We're just, it's like we need to just meet every week and just jam. And then people started Work hearing, out the kinks. It, not even not work even out the that, kinks, man. just, just jam. We seriously would just jam. Playing aimlessly. Just, okay. just playing whatever came to mind every day. So, And it essentially was like an exercise in just seeing how well the three of us could gel together. Mm. Um, which turned into people hearing that we were doing that and going, oh, you guys want to try out this show? Those first shows we played, I mean, like Austin said, we would we would go in and it'd be like, okay, we got that first riff, then we're gonna improvise, and then it's another riff, then we're gonna improvise. Like he yeah. made it, he made it sound like we had some songs planned out with little bits in between that were improv. No, it would be like we would start be like, okay, we're gonna start with that riff and then just improv for another like six minutes and then see where it leads us. That's how our first shows went, and it was a fantastic time. yeah. Like, <laughs> and things I have videos my like, old phone from that like. Not bad. Like I, I yes. want to say that like we sounded terrible. I was happy with it. Yeah, no, it awesome. was fun. It was fun. I mean, there was definitely some. Sometimes we finished the show, and like I remember one time we did like we were getting. It was around the time we started. It was right in between being more structured. I mean, we, even though we might not sound structured, we are very structured now to being unstructured. We were right in between. I remember we played this like really clean set to like six, seven people in this like house, and like we finished, and everyone was just like silent and then that and i think about that show sometimes because like where was that one we were at uh with ryan still um oh left of, yeah and i just we, we finished it and uh, like rest in peace we looked out yeah we looked up and they were just like peace, dude. and they started clapping a lot but it was just really weird just because that sometimes happens to us where people with a mission like they don't, they don't they don't know how they to, don't know how to respond yeah. and then i'm like like i just made some shit people did not like uh, and then I pack up and it, it's whatever, but, but at the end of the day, if it feels good, it felt good and it was good. But yeah, for me these days, I, I can't attest to so much. I'm definitely like the latest member. I have not been around even, even slightly as long so, as anyone else. Ethan, when did you join? I joined in 2018. Okay. So I've been four years. We've got four years, ten year now. But uh, yeah, it, I do feel like I contributed to a, a certain degree of structure because I hear these parts and I'm like, how how in tarnation am I supposed to play this <laughs> stuff? And then so so I'm like, okay, so we're doing this part this many times, and I kind of force them to think about, yeah, I guess we are doing that part this many times. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, <laughs> yes we did. Well, and so now we're actually like writing songs where it's like, okay, can we play from the pre-chorus to the second verse or whatever? And it's like, oh, okay, that yeah, makes sense. We're now at a point where we can, when we're talking about our song, it's like, yeah, start out the chorus of the song, and we all know what we're talking about. Whereas we had that happen in the past, we'd be like, yeah, play the chorus of, I don't know, Jazzy Boy, and all three of us would start playing something different. <laughs> we're like, oh, we'll see. Well, just a, 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 a touch, just a sprinkling, a smattering of discipline. <laughs> just a teeny tiny. That's all yeah. It happens. I feel like it's usually the drummer to bring that kind of stuff to everyone's attention. Oh, well, it's like, just well, like, I'm not supposed to play this. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Also, I hadn't really been playing drums. <laughs> like, I'd never, I had fun fact, I'd not been a performing drummer. I did not own a drum kit when I joined this band. Do you, my, you borrowed my drum kit for like the first year, year and a half. Yeah, I, I did, I've not owned a drum kit. I've drummed for over a decade, you know, whatever, a long time. But I did not own my drum set until like two years ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, was gonna, I still mostly play other people's kits. I was gonna say essentially the, uh, the practice does not happen at the drummer's house. That is, it can now. I, okay, well, not okay. previously, yeah. but now, now I actually own a couple kits because yes, I'm, I'm balling, you know, doing that the, the, uh, the, stuff. the rush, you know, are you gonna get a cage? You know, that flip yes. upside down. Do work on it. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on cube. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it doesn't right. roll around comfortably. It's. <laughs> I mean, we, we, I tried. Uh, I talked to my dad about borrowing the tractor so I could try and like just t attach him to the bucket to lift him up. But dad wasn't for it. So now we just put Ethan in a Zord ball with a couple symbols and just roll him around the stage to get that effect. <laughs> that would be perfect.
does your songwriting process look like, Austin? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Here we go. So, or is um, it, it, it's primarily you? Um, no. No. No, it's a whole, so like what it is is like, so it depends like, on the song. Yeah, so like a lot, like, sometimes what I'll do is just like, I'll write a riff, and then I might have, so I might have like three riffs, like, riff, 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 and I might be like, or like riff, riff, chorus, but like, that's it. And like, I need more than just that. And so sometimes I'll like, I'll either just take it to Bailey and that practice, or I'll, I'll, I'll have Bailey come over and we'll workshop it, and then we'll take a more finalized version. Ethan's still not done. Mm-hmm. And Ethan, like, we brought Ethan on after our old drummer left. Something that Ben wasn't able to like answer sometimes, and it's not really his fault. It's because I would like to like I don't write a riff in a different like tempo, and I'd be like I need to get from here to here, and that's not an easy thing. And so Ethan's kind of transition master. I'd be like, hey man, like how do we get from here to here? Like I need something, and yeah. uh, that does tend to be my contribution. I'm I'm all about transitions, and, it, and it's a big and it's a, it's a really like important role that Ethan carries that because it's like. He's he's not just like he's the glue that holds it together, but like when it comes to like songwriting, like he does become part of that like adhesive. I feel like the drummer of and this is how Lucy works, like Jason will Wes has like, okay, we'll do that. I mean Wes's formula is pretty much A B, A, B, C, and Jason's like, Oh, okay, well hold on, let's yeah, the drummer it's he's the key. I mean that's yeah. But a lot of our songs, like I would say half of them are completely linear. Like we're really into like linear songwriting, yeah. Um, and, I, and I like to call, I don't have to call back like like other like a core. Like I don't like, and it's just because I get worried that I'm it, a again because when we first started playing, I couldn't sing and like at the same time. And so now when I I do both, I don't try to add too much lyrics. So hey, fuck it, fuck them up, forget them. But also like I treat my voice as more of an instrument in the confines of the band, so much to where I always would prefer my voice to be just slightly lower than the guitar and the bass. No one lets me do that. But that's... But yeah, but basically it's like... But it's not It's not always the same. Sometimes Bailey is like, yo, I have this thing. And I'm like, what key is it in? And I'm like, oh, I actually have something that's just this riff that's in this key. And that happens quite often. That happens quite often. Where yeah. like, and then well, we, we do try to give Ethan some sort of semblance of a, like a half-finished product. Because if we give him something that's too loose... He goes, where's my roadmap? And we yeah, go, we like, don't know. Well, this, this <laughs> we're still been, blazing, we're still making the road. <laughs> well, that's that's how the songwriting has gone most recent. Like, the most recent stuff we've written has been like, okay, we have, like, a real, real loose idea of something. And it's like, what you try and do, like, what I try and do is like, okay, well, what's the thesis? Okay, what's the thesis of this song? Like, is the shtick... Like, for example, you listen to Bam Blam, one of our classics, one of our openers we usually the whole shtick of that song is that it is like frantic, bees buzzing sort of energy, like panic and like speed. Like those things, those things guide the whole ethos of the song. And so I try and like have five words, even if that's all it is, to like guide the writing of the song. And then, you know, I say, Austin says, and I say, well, what if it was like, and like, try and guide it in the way of like okay so this is our thesis how are we going to flesh this out or whatever but like afg which is that is that on the tour ep that's on the air quotes tour tape yes. okay so yeah. that's a great song because that song was not written like this that song that was a five i pretty much I wrote think... that one like i came in with yeah. the bass part and the, the bass part that i came in with was essentially what we worked the whole song around and like i came this is funny i came back that day from um we, my, me and my wife like to take trips to Asheville. That's where, we're like, when we first started dating, and like, we, that's where we'd go for our anniversary trips. And we, and it wasn't, I don't, we didn't, we would just, we sometimes oh, just go there. Good story. And we came back, yeah, so, like, well, we're, we're, we're coming, right, right. We're, we're, we're coming back, and, like, I got, you know, like, it's, like, 4 p.m., I got band practice, like, at 5.30 or something, like, I wake up, like, right around Blacksburg, and I'm, like, I kind of turn to my left. And like I, I see something that's very fucking fucking strange, and I go I go like, babe, do you, do, what 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 what's going on the highway right now? And she's like, what? And she kind of turns and like, oh. there is this woman who has pulled over her like white Cadillac SUV, has parked it in the median, is <laughs> standing on the top of her fucking car, and she's waving a fucking American flag back and forth, just like, <laughs> like she looks mad. 
She looks wild. And so I'm just perplexed. Bathrobe? No, no bathrobe. No, she was wearing like jeans and like a black t-shirt. Okay. Like yeah. she was like 45. Like it was bizarre. And and we, so we just went back home and like. It's not a metaphor. The, no, it's not a metaphor. Not a metaphor. <laughs> not a metaphor. I, um, just buy the book, literal story. Yeah. And so we, yeah. And we, we get back and Bailey is like, yo, hey, you know that riff? Like let's work on the, the thing I have. And he shows it to us. And we run through it, and I and I don't always have the vocal mic set up, but that day I did. And so I just started just saying bullshit in the microphone, and we did it the second time. And that was the And song. that's the song. super cohesive oh. because my shtick when I come to AFG was right. I had been watching YouTube videos Adam Neely videos oh, yes. on YouTube what's the and slowest BPM a exactly. song can be exactly what's like the slowest a song can be where people can still like associate a beat with another beat and uh, basic the basic gist of that video is that he concluded it was round about uh, I think it's 33 and like half. 33 and a half BPM before people like stop being able to associate beats with each other and I'm like, well, I like the idea of trying to write a song around that. And so I bring that idea. Austin brings this narrative about a crazy lady waving a flag. And Bailey has a riff. And it's like all these totally different things came together perfectly. The song a, the song just came together. Oh, I, it was one of those moments where each one of us, I think each one of us wanted something wildly different out of what that song became. But what the song became was, was, exactly, what we all was exactly, well, not, it was... It wasn't anything that we wanted at the time, but as it came together, we're like, this is perfect. We don't know how we did this, but we've done it. Because, like, I was essentially joking. I mean, this yeah. story happened, but, like, yeah. my first idea, I remember, like, my first, the first idea, I was like, oh, I'm going to think about some, some sad stuff that I once went through, like, a long time ago. And then I was just then fucking around on the mic. Mm -hmm. And it just... Again, like, the song... Other than Bailey's riff, in some way, was me and Ethan just kind of goofing off. But, like... Yeah, I mean, like, but did it, I genuinely think we could come up with a song that was basically 60 BPM, functionally 60 BPM? Because that's that's ridiculously slow. A lot of our music's pretty up-tempo. And, uh, and was, then this six, song... 60 is... is that song yeah. is, like, it's, it's like 66. But it's, it, really? It is 60, okay. 60 BPM. That's like, I'm, I'm synchronizing it with the tick-tock of a clock in my head, essentially. I'm like... Before I start the song, I'm like, okay, how, how's, like, a clock sound? Okay, I got it. Because <laughs> it starts with me. Yeah, but it is one of those really serendipitous things where, I mean, you have that droning bass riff, which in my mind, like, when Austin started singing about being in the car, looking out the window, it's just that drone, which to me, kind of, at least when I'm on the long car trips, 
that drone mimics the feeling of the tunnel vision as you're just driving down the highway mm. for miles and miles and miles at night. So as he comes in with these lines about being in the car, looking out your window, and seeing this just crazy person in great distress, <laughs> which also in the song kind of, I feel like, mimics that when we kick in the very end, and it's just this ginormous explosion of yeah. sound. But yeah. not to mention the drums kind of being this meandering kind of like, uh, duh, like lots of landing on the, the like, one again does of mm. like a beat and it's it's funny because it's like you you know you hit the little percussive elements as you're driving along thumping yeah it's like just lots of good imagery that wasn't intentional but like really ends up being it was super cohesive like immersive we love it a ton it, and people tend to like it as well they tend to i'm just always worried that people are going to like if they hear what i'm saying they're going to be like Oh, he's making, they're making an allegory for America or making an allegory against America. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's just a bad moment having a manic episode. It, yeah. All of our lyrics are about bad yeah, things. Guys, we said yeah. we yeah. weren't going to yeah. tell them. We <laughs> told them. We were going to let people work. So, so well, kind of like have a. Go ahead. Oh, I know you go right. No, it's just that, like you guys are talking about the road. And it's like you almost have like an image of something in your mind. And then you're making music around like being in a car on a long ride you must like have an image back. in the back well, of your mind kind yeah. of thing well that's kind of what i was trying to get into that's what was so strange about it because it all fit together so well like how ethan's talking about how his offbeats feel like you hitting the potholes mm-hmm. or the wrong I like or something it was one of those just serendipitous moments where with austin coming in with those lyrics it just it took our musical the at least the instrumental aspect of it and put it all into perspective to just completely flesh out this image it was just one of those things where the sonic thing we were making completely fit this image that came off the top of austin's head and it was just one of those things where everything fell into place perfectly there what we weren't going into it with the image of the road or anything in mind like for okay. like me when i wrote the bass riff it was more so um i wanted something that was drone and i wanted something that just felt very uh kind of i guess disassociated mm-hmm just atmospheric. And atmospheric. So we don't really have any slow songs. So like we did want to write a that, slow song. Yeah. We knew that we wanted to write something slow. There's also that just kind of utilitarian aspect. It's like we need a slow song. And I'm like, well, I have a slow. I song. got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if every song was that simple, that'd be great. Oh, uh, it's funny because you can because a lot of your stuff is it's fairly fast tempo. Yeah. Um, but. Just to have uh, to push yourself into okay, what if we slowed it down, or what if we sped it up to a ridiculous inhuman speed? Yeah. I, mm, uh, we would go on very soon afterward to write a song like that. As well. Yes. Uh, See, well, um, I, I, another song that I think is really funny. Just talking about like Twinkly Boy, which is the second track off of her EP, which is on Bandcamp. Um, so how that song was written. So that's a really little, little song. So that would have just at the time, that would have it was that was just me and the original drummer, and we were in my parents' basement. For some reason, we were practicing on that. We never practiced on that. We were and like my girlfriend, now wife, she was on there too. And I'm just I'm like, I'm making again. We are trying to be an emo math rock band, but I'm making fun of math rock bands in this context, and I just like be like, yo, all fucking math rock bands just sound like this. And then I was just like, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. And I'm like, it's like wait. <laughs> So I don't know. I do think it's funny that two of our favorites, like I think two of our, our at least crowd favorites, it seems like people one of one of our favorites. It's one of our favorites. Yeah, I, I would yeah. say Jack about crowds, but Twinkly definitely them. is. I know Jazzy's yeah, out there. Definitely a crowd at least party. two of the favorite songs I like to perform. They they were written as jokes. Mm-hmm. They were. Right. They started out as jokes. It, 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 like, not maybe not entirely jokes, but like. Half of it was sarcastic, and uh, you know, uh, Blur's song two yeah. started out as a joke. So I mean, it's but that isn't surprising though. Yeah, <laughs> That's what it is, yeah. No, it's... when you love something enough, you're you're allowed to kind of make fun of it. Yeah, that, that, that's how I know. That's kind yeah. of the thing. Is like I feel like a good stupid joke really makes the creativity come. I mean, I like yes. it. I mean, yeah. like it, it engages foreign parts of your brain that you're not usually like. Oh, I'm thinking really hard, and I want to like write a song that follows these conventions and these rules in this style. 
But, like, if you completely can deactivate that part of your brain and use different weird stuff, that's where stuff comes together really fast. Mm. For me, it's not even that. It's more so, like, the humor kind of disarms you, and it allows you to, I Takes guess... Takes walls down. Takes the walls down, but for me, it, like, the humor almost allows you to be more true to yourself, because I feel like there's a lot of times, like, when I've gone to ride a rip or ride a base park, I start thinking way too much about, has it, is this something I'm, I've already done? Is this something other people have already done? Is this something that's too cliche? Is it too weird? Whereas, if you go in and just go, I'm going to have fun, or even something like, I'm going to have a laugh, you go in and you just play the first thing that comes out of your heart, and you go, ooh, there we go. Hmm. Humor, humor is very truthful, you know? Yeah, I mean... I don't know if it was if we wrote it well. No, there, and like, and this is not on anything available yet. But or whatever song, "Slow Me," I mentioned it before. Um, <laughs> I wrote that song. Like part of it, I wrote like the intro, and like I got with Bailey. Um, this is right in between our old drummer leaving and anything coming on. So we're like right finishing the song like without the old drummer. I'm yeah. We're so we're we're rediscovering and. I and, believe there is a video of us writing that. Yeah, and the Instagram. thing is, is like, yeah, there is, and like, you know, there's this like, I don't know what it's a jazz section. I'm gonna look at a, I don't know what time we'll signature it is. I don't really know. The point is, is like, me and Bailey wrote it together, and we're writing it, and we're, it's recorded, but it's really funny because it's like. <laughs> I stop and I'm like, is this too weird? And he's like, No, no, I, I remember the video. It's it's us playing it. And I'm like, No, we should do something. And I do the riff, the da 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 ba ba. And you just go, Is that stupid? And I'm like, Yeah, but it's all right. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like, <laughs> like the whole thing is just like that section is like really. It's 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 a, it's a funny. But it's hard. It's to play. uncountable. It's very it's okay. musical. <laughs> it's us. It's more like. One two three, one two three, one two one two. Like, like you're just mm. counting in your head. Like, I'm positive that when Austin and I were writing it, we were sitting there going, like, we've seen people try and dance to our music, and we're like, let's give them something. Let's to, I want to see him try and dance to this shit. Let's right. see what happens. Just out of. For those yeah. listening, I'm trying to essentially dance. Extreme dancing. dancing. <laughs> it, is, it is functionally <laughs> uncountable. If there's no music to it. It's math. Don't even try to. It's not good math either. It's not interesting. It's not like theoretical. Not, I, I, I was gonna say it's not Einstein, but I'm, oh wait, a second. I'm going back to just me and Bailey really like early 2000s Discord bands, yes, and that do. section was heavily influenced by like you, you and not you and oh, Barrett yes. and all that stuff. So like, but again, it was funny writing it, mm -hmm. and when we t pulled it off, when we do when we do pull it off, it's rarely. You yeah. say that, but we have only performed only performed that song live once, where it was okay. Every other time we performed it, it no, you're it. right. You're right. It just always feels like well, when we practice it. There's, there's there are times when we practice it where it's like we can't get it for two weeks, and then, mm -hmm. and then we get it, and then we get it for a long time, and we don't and practice, we and then we lose it. And then you're recording it was miserable. Oh was my god! Five takes probably. That was the worst. To get the 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 transition from the uncountable part to the little waltzy part that follows. That 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 genuine. Y'all remember how frustrated I was getting that day? I'm like, oh my god, one more time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were, I, no we, one knows what this sounds like. Maybe maybe we'll give you something to play. So and that's just that section. Give that section. Okay. Okay. That section yeah, so you know what we're talking about. All right. Because it, oh, know it and, I, it. and we want you to imagine Ethan just in a warehouse with him and the sound engineer Austin and I are outside because we're like, we need to give them some space. And it would just be like, da, da, ba, 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 and then just like. <gasps> Big snare crash. Do it again! And, do it again. <laughs> and that went on for a good 20 minutes. And then finally we just like... Yes, I like die.
already did it one time, but they're like, we should have a second just for comparison. Yeah, yeah. and we went with the first. Who did you record it with? Uh, Marshall, Marshall Hicks. Hicks. Marshall, yeah, Marshall, 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 Marshall is... Mixed it. Marshall and then all, love Marshall. all of the, like, dubbing, like, I did, like, a synth track on there and, like, after guitar. Yeah. And, and, and I want to say, like, the synth I did the same day, didn't, he was like, I don't live at Tom like, nah, and I got that done in, like, one take, too. So, like, but, yeah, I, and Slow Me, even singing for Slow Me was, was a, a marathon. Sure. What I love about Marshall is the fact I, I remember I was I was recording an EP with him, and I was doing this guitar track. I mean, it was just a little like what I do it, uh, just the you know power chord, power chord all the way up, and then power chord all the way down. But he was like, I was I couldn't quite get it, and he goes, he lets me do the take, and then he goes, I don't, I think you can do it better. Yeah, oh, yeah he did that to us. Too. Yeah, just just like, like he's like ah. I think you get that better. Yeah, like, it's, it's funny right. because you can also temper the other end. Like Austin, in particular, can be like, "Hey, I did that thing. Like I, I was like maybe like a quarter pitch too low on this, that, the other." And Marshall's like, "It sounds fine." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, 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 there was like one like around like went up like it was like you're like thirty three cents too high or whatever. It but it made that like, ugly sounding chord. Okay, like but ugliness is the point. The, yeah, no, there yeah, it was, it was some con dev. I, like, I sometimes, like, and now I have tape on my guitar, so I don't fuck this up, but, like, sometimes my other pinky will go one fret too high, and it's in key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, it, laid against that, some of the lower notes I'm playing on the chord, what Bailey's doing, and what the vocal part is, it is hard to tension. Yeah. Definitely tension. Clashing. And it was like, guys, any fix? I'm like, no, that's fine. I'm like, guys, like, when I split vocals, this is going to sound bad. Because mm -hmm. I, that note, I do it, like, it's either the exact same note. I want to say it's the same, like, or is it an octave down? But I want to say it's the same exact, like, so I don't know. But yeah, no, Marshall's great. I think oh, it's yeah. something like you're yeah. a half step off from that. Yeah. yeah. And, but it was, he was doing the, the bad warblies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, uh, what is your best gig? What, uh, what is your worst gig? And what, uh, what is your craziest gig? Oh, I can say craziest right off the top of my head. Crazy. The craziest one I participated in. We played a show at Parkway Brewery. I knew you were going to Yes. <laughs> and gosh, the crowd was so weird because in the middle of one of our songs, they whip out some like, like, like the, the, the dang blinds behind you. They whip out some, some window blinds and start flapping them around, like doing the wave with them. Like, what is going on out it's here? It's some blinds that you use a string to pull and close that and you like pull. Just, and they're like, just swaying and... And the dude yeah. is syncing up him opening and like lowering the blinds to him dancing. And it out was... in the middle of the crowd, there's no window. It's just radio. No, it, the dude's just holding, holding it, it, just doing his thing, dancing the way he dances. He figured out a way to dance through our music. I'm somehow. not aware of this at all, guys. <laughs> the first time I'm hearing they about were this. Fine. You were you were in your guitar, you know, just tapping away. Like I normally, I'm normally am somewhere else. <laughs> I could not look at it. it Smoking was a banana. So <laughs> see, that's the thing. Ethan did <laughs> See, that's the thing. Ethan, I didn't see it happen either. Ethan, it was like after, when we were tearing down. Like, like I was. Did y'all see the blinds thing? Yeah, I'm like. Wrapping up my cables and Ethan, like while he's grabbing his ride, someone's just like, "Dude, did you see that guy with the blinds?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "This guy." I swear I'm not crazy. Yeah, and as we're leaving, I, I see a guy walking around with blinds. With blinds. I'm like, "Oh my <laughs> god, he's not joking." It happened. No, this crap happened. It was not fake. <laughs> was, was, so that, was that that, that Halloween show in 2019? Yeah. No, 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 no. It was, it was with the uh, Amber Tender. Yeah, yeah, that was right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was he f he figured out a way to uh, dance to that part. He pulled out some blinds. Exactly. <laughs> he needed he needed a prop. To dance. <laughs> that was so weird to me. I don't know about best and worst, but like that was definitely um, our worst show was definitely last week. <laughs> last week. Oh yeah, that was trash. That was terrible. Oh yeah, that was pretty good. We played, but that was more a logistical thing than our playing. Although our playing. Was is it, you know, I'll talk about this often where it's like a feedback loop. If the crowd is engaged, crowd doesn't care what you're doing, or there's no crowd at all, or you feel like maybe you were going to play at the show, but no one actually really wanted to hear you. They just put you in the middle because they need you to show up. Yeah. You you might not play a great set, and like, when you play this six eight section, I mess it up. My pedal board just starts having malfunctions. His kick drum moves forward. I break, oh, a, I break a string. So Meanwhile, I'm sitting there in my corner, just like watching it all fall apart. Like, oh, yeah, but, it, but you oh, know, so okay. it's a weeknight, and it is like midnight. Week? When we go on. Oh, we no, no. wildly late. 
we yeah. went up crazy late for, for like, I got reasons work in the I don't For play. a weeknight, yeah, that is absolutely, yeah. We finished around, tough. I think we finished around midnight. We yeah, like, we, like well, 11. we finished, but like we stopped in yeah. yeah, because yeah. our girlfriends slash wives were the only people left in the crowd. Yeah, they're just sitting there like, "Can we go home?" We're like, "Yeah, like I'm yeah. tired." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have three more songs, but you know what? That was oh, exactly we had a forty-five minute set. We only played about twenty-five. 30. Yeah, okay. That's... Yeah, I don't know if we played that much. We played like three songs. We played two songs, and I just remember I stopped, and it's like, we, four, five. Do we need to go on. I know, it was like Our Ladies and the Sound Man, and I just look out there, I look, I look at them, and I look at the Sound Man, and I'm like, do you want us to keep going? Like, what Is do we do? Yeah. He just kind of, he just slowly hear... looks down at the board, goes, oh, God. No, the Sound no. Man was loving it. He's oh, like, okay. Yeah, dude, yeah. We're like, like, all right, sounds good, bud. So, so, we, we, so we gave him at least, like, a full 30 minutes. Okay. Right? Just, yeah. I, and I was just, like, you know, answering, like, the, our best, I guess, tough, because I feel like. We've done a lot of really good games where I left being like, dude, that was the you one. Know? And then we play another one where we go, that's the one. But I know that, I know we played a show in December of 2019 with, it was like the la- one of the last things that Jamie was involved in at the spot. It was like, oh, oh yeah. she, she, she ran, ran that was, so yeah, well. It was a 10-year bizarre anniversary. Super we played last and like everyone stayed and we killed it. And like, that might not have been our best performance. I feel like it was a great performance. That was a very but good performance. But that energy of that, of that night, like, it's cemented in my brain. But I will say that the that our, we did play a Halloween show at Parkway in October of that same year. Really fun. And that game was also great. Played that way with Suits one. for Ghosts and who else? Uh, shoot. Oh. Was, they had some weird burlesque thing going on as well. Was it Lucid You we had with us? Jeff Conley? I think it was Jeff Conley, Suits, and Us, right? That seems right. It was that Suits for Ghosts was that. Yes, yeah, Jeff, Jeff opened, right? Yeah, yes, he did. Because he was doing that solo thing for a while. Yeah. 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 But that show was really cool cause like, or he, because, like, because there was is. like a burlesque like show in between and there was like a costume contest. We started a little, li- like the whole thing, we, we, we got on stage a little, little later. Marshall was, was, you know, being the sound engineer and he was on stage with us right behind it, which was really cool actually. I, that's, I love, I loved that. Yeah. Because, uh, but, like, we, you know, we're supposed to play a 45 minute set. I get to, we get to around 30, and because of the time when we started, we knew it was going to be stopped soon. So I was like, all right, guys, well, because of the time, I think we're going to just, this is our last one. And like, this guy kind of like walks up the stage and he's just like, no, oh, man, so like, one more. Keep he's, going. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, keep going, man. No. And I was like, well, man, I was like, I think I have to stop because like the bartender is it's like I know the owner probably going he's like I am the owner yeah keep <laughs> he, play, like, he starts that's the thing he starts yelling that we're like yeah yeah sure bud and that's until uh, Jake from Suits for Ghosts comes up to me and he no, goes like and he goes Bailey Bailey that genuinely is the owner keep playing so we, and so I look at the other guys I'm like no I, 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 yeah, yeah so give, we, give the man what he wants so we keep played, going like we because we had I think had two or three songs left the actual so we played those and we played like two we played five extra songs I guess two extra songs but like that was cool just because. He really liked yeah. it. Yeah. And Sometimes then the owner pulled one... out some blinds and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, another, we were there another again. Candidate, another candidate for best show. That show we did at Dang Fork at the Market, where the crowd was just really vibing. That, that was, was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. That was a so show. good. <laughs> Sully was there for the show. The oh, energy, the energy in that we show We played with three yes. of that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And it was a very yeah, good I fit- one. I've, uh, if I remember correctly, that was the one where my uh, that uh, pedal yes. that you sh- I showed you uh, yes. that just malfunctioned and oh god, Jason was so he came up to me after the show. He's like, I, I swear to God, I thought you were just messing with me. I thought you're like, shit, what the hell? You know, but it was yeah. I thought you were just being like, I'm gonna get weird with it. I didn't realize you're having equipment issues. <laughs> no, it's yeah. It's kind of funny because I I tend to have equipment issues quite often. No, it's a... nah, it, <laughs> it happens. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, it happens. The more yeah. equipment there is, the more uh, fault points there tends to be. Mm-hmm. Or if you're yes. a person who's like, I only play through two things. If you are, I think, yeah. you want problems in your life. Uh, you yeah, yeah, it's, it's fighting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, if I hated myself, I'd I'd, I'd bring my twin reverb and play through. Yeah, but it's, I mean, you see the the, the super oh, over I there. It's uh, just reverb. like, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's just a, it's, my back does not. Yeah, but my, yeah. You know, yeah. I want my back to hurt. <laughs> I want my ears to ring, and I want my amp to blow up. Because if you're playing in like <laughs> a, a, a I extremely like the wet or humid place, like great examples, like last year for my honeymoon, we went to like Washington, and we like ended up going down through San Francisco to go back home. Um, but Death Cab was playing like, mm-hmm. the last show for tour in Napa, so we went and saw them. But the open the band was really cool. It was um, Illuminati Hottie. But the thing is, is like they're about to play, and I look at my wife, and I'm like, dude, they're all playing like Fender Deluxe Reverb for Princeton's, like, and it's 
Like, they have rescheduled the next day because it was too much rain because a bomb cyclone had hit, like, the West Coast. And so the whole show was, like, trenching down for it. I'm like, there's just no way. And, like, 15, 20 minutes in their set. Yeah. Mm. But they're, 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 they're cause it's like a, I think it's a three or four piece, but, like, the the lead vocalist guitar amp just stopped working. And was, although, oh, I don't right. realize how mm-hmm. like, yeah. it just saw it. Womp, womp. It, 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 <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I play jazz chorus listeners, you know, um, don't let your friends tell you that Solid State Amps are bad, they're great. Solid um, State Amps are fantastic. They're Solid fantastic. State is good. Don't, don't let people tell you otherwise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, being a, I guess, emo, no, math rock. Emo blue gaze. It, emo it's, blue gaze, it's, okay, it's yes. adjacent to those things. Yes. Yeah, um, um, post-rock, uh, math pop. Post-rock, <laughs> math rock. Uh, Post pop uh, math rock. Elvis impersonator. Uh, I I mean you know, behind the drums it's uh, Elvis behind the drums you know it's a little weird but hey I, I dig it. Where do you think he's been hiding all this time? He's, <laughs> he's here, kid. I am him. I am Elvis. And, and I'm sorry, nobody typically pays attention to drummers uh, uh, unless they're a drummer themselves. Uh, no, that's a, no, that's a joke. Hundred percent the truth. <laughs> oh, so the bass players got it worse, dude. We're just sitting there chilling like. <laughs> but I if it's notice. gone, you notice. <laughs> so, Sometimes. I guess as an elf, as Elvis impersonators, what do you think of the uh, what what's the scene uh, the scene like around locally? Or uh... Ooh. okay, yeah, not sure. We we had that conversation with um, guy, Kennifer, Ken, Kenny, Ken, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth, yeah, Kenneth, yeah, Kenneth. <laughs> yeah. Kenneth. That, that's what he is in the tone, and. Uh, <laughs> Because, and I didn't know this, but, like, I, I don't know. So, like, I feel like the type of music that, like, we kind of play, there have been bands from Roanoke that do something very similar, but they don't exist at the same time. They don't. Um, yeah, and they're, that's like, true. You had, in the early 2000s, you had, like, the K-Word, then they became a solid press, and they kind of disappeared, and, like, I didn't know this, but, yeah, Kenny Kenny played in Bombardier. But when I started, like, when I was 18, I started going to Bombardier shows, and I was like, that was, like, my favorite local band. I yep. didn't know he was in it, and he was, like, dude, I was in that band, I was, like, so they're doing this really awesome post rock thing, and then they disbanded. And then like a year or two after they stopped, we started doing stuff. And like mm-hmm. really until yearning, and you guys started to pop up, like we were kind of we were kind of flirting by ourselves. We were on our island, and like and what I'm about to say next is not like a dig. It's just we have a lot of friends who do a lot of stuff with punk bands, and we were tired. I was tired of being oh, the heaviest band in Bill. I was tired of being the heaviest band in Bill. We're not a heavy band. There's so many times we're we, certainly not. We'd play yeah. a lot of we'd play some some sets, and we'd be. And I just I there's a we big difference the, between loud. I think and heavy. we were the loudest yeah. band on the bill, not the heaviest band. I don't know. I but I wanted, to, but I was like, yeah, I want to play with some some other loud or heavier groups, and like I don't know, it just and I get it too, but like some of our bands who played punk bands who were involved in booking punk shows, they didn't they didn't want us there, and like yeah, mm. and I hated that. That's the one thing about the scene you that like surprised the punk. I was I, I, I was because they were our friends. I didn't think that it would matter. And Roanoke is such a small scene that like. We should be propping each other up as much as we can. Like, yeah, right? oh, absolutely. But, and the thing is, and I'm talking to people who are part of the community, and, like, they think how I feel about it is the same. Like, they, they think it's stupid, too. Like, it's... Austin's putting yeah. some smoke on the pod. Here we go. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's not putting some smoke. We got, just, we, uh, we got It doesn't make me angry. It just makes me sad. Because I, I want to sure. play with... Yeah. And I want to be introduced to bands that I might have never heard come through because I'm not playing in those venues very often. And, like, I just wanted to be that's, more open. And that's kind of why I put together that compilation. Because yeah. I'm like, I was... Exactly. It was, Trying to bridge some gaps here. Yeah, uh, it's just, important. You know, I had the... I, re- I really liked the idea of the floorboards essentially covering you guys. Oh, and, oh, yeah. I wanted that to happen well, so well, bad. I had, the thing is, like, there was, like, an organ solo in there. So, like, to the song, I was like... The vocal part is perfect in my range. Sing it octave up, like that's like my per- I was like, perfect. Yeah. And there was like a guitar. Like, there was actually like a kind of clean, twinkly guitar part in there. I was like, awesome. It's right before an organ solo. I was like, I'm gonna get rid of the organ solo. I'm gonna extend that out. I'm gonna loop it, and we're gonna do like an American football thing for like a minute and a half, and then probably do a classic Space Camp explosion. And then they dropped it. Yeah. But the joke is on you is that I have played in multiple country bands. Well, I mean, like, which is funny. Blue, blue, blue gaze, or what? <laughs> Makes sense. I think it's Bailey, Bailey, and Mo Gaze. Technically, Bailey and Ethan have also played in country bands, so yep. like, we, we have. There's truth. He's got a lot of time playing uh, country esque music. Yep. The, uh, yeah, I. Not, not that I'm calling them out, but I think they may have been intimidated by. 
Um, oh, no, I, that hard. no, no. The bass part at least ain't hard. I, when when it dropped, I was like, it's because they got our cover. Isn't it? <laughs> but here's the thing is like, um, and I was even telling Landon this, but when Landon covered our song, Jazzy Boy, he did the whole thing. He finger picked every note. If I was covering Jazzy Boy, Dude, that he cool, took the hardest way out possible. Yeah, I would have oh cut, cut out that like weird intro we have. I, I love that intro. It's because we like this heat. That was a this heat influence. Yeah. Intro. This heat. I love this it. Yeah. From the seventies. Um, yeah. But uh, but if I would have covered the song, I'd have been like, Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that, yeah because like um, unless you are making music that like has the proclivity to be harsh in a way that makes sense. Oh, yeah. But if I was like an acoustic person, I'd just been like, Oh, I'm just starting to. Yeah. Yeah, your own thing. But I, I love that he did the intro.
of, I guess, in the scene locally that you guys, uh, like, local musicians that you admire? No, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. For sure. Okay. For sure. Uh, Bailey, you want to start with this one? Yeah. Ooh, oh, God, put me on the spot. Here we go. I mean, for me, first time I saw Yearning Live, I was like, oh, my goodness. That, that was, it, when I saw them, the first thought I had was like, thank God we're not alone. Yeah. There's yeah. more yeah, yeah, yeah. there's more post rock, shoegaze, whatever, and I didn't know it the first time I saw them, but I was like I mean I'd listen to Bomb I never got the chance to go to Bomb see Bombardier live. But... They're so good. Oh I they know. They were so good. Um but after I it was maybe the second time I saw Urine and I started putting the puzzle pieces together where I'm like, Kenny was in Bombardier. Holy crap. No wonder I like this so much. Um really, really enjoy Yearning. Um at least for myself, I'm a very big fan of just down tuned sludgier music. So Gaffer Project is another, yeah, especially as a as another bass player. Um, Jordan Sound is what he does with the like abs- that that oh, throw like it's yeah is absolutely massive, and it's one of those things where every time I see him play, I'm just like, I wish, I wish I could be like. That. <laughs> Jordan has been around in the in the oh, scene he, so long. I was he, watching shows he did with Life in a Foxhole back in. 20, yeah, 10, we were 10, like young like, in like early was, high school he's, he's watching Jordan so play, yeah. and Big he's still here killing it. Yeah, Big yeah. respect for Jordan. So yeah, so yearning, Jordan. Um, yeah, I, I'd say at least for me, like the two, those are like two guys that really stick out for me. For people where I'm like, these are dudes where I'm like, this is this is fantastic. I feel very happy and proud to be able to make music alongside of. I'll go next. Well, I'll eat them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely. I'm. I'm so impressed with the the style of. Gosh, I wish I knew his name. Drummer for Dover and the ele- Elevators. Uh, oh, Tyler. Uh, Tyler Slice. Wood. Yep. I, I'm. I'm telling. I'm telling. I'm putting it on the record right now. If I get hit by a bus, if I die, Space Camp <laughs> should have that guy re- replace me because he's just got a really unique style and he's got the sort of like aggressiveness. Mm. That I really crave in drums. Like I really want to hear a drummer that's trying to be on the same level as everyone else. Because a lot of projects require a drummer who's going to play the cards and just kind of, you know, make be behind the rest of the music, just be the engine that drives it. But I like drums that are like out in the front, being bold and present, and like making, like being a part of the music, not so much just the engine that's driving. The thing about Dover is the fact that essentially it's Ryan and Tyler. There's no, exactly. there's not a bass. There's no. not so essentially it's. It's just the, the two of them making the biggest yeah. sound they possibly yeah, can. Absolutely no shade to Ryan either, but I feel like without those driving, pummeling drums at the very front, it's just that that whole project would lose its power. But, but that, I that disagree because I saw good. them when Bailey. Oh the no, drummer. you did it, and it was here, <laughs> <it>, man. <laughs> <laughs> They oh. were great. They were really fun. We what what we're talking about is like it, for it's the it's the El Pasión and Bailey did have it, but you never saw them in Bailey. Bailey no, used I to be the driver. I, didn't get to see, so, I don't know if they Bailey still or. have that album up, but I did play on an album. Dead. It might be oh, off my back. My mom. back, mom. I sang and played guitar on that track, and boy, do I love it. But uh, <laughs> but no, I mean. Talking about what you're saying, the energy of Dover, being on the other side, like, in front of Ryan's guitar amps, I mean, I do think a huge part is just Ryan's sound. Ryan has a very, very unique sound, a very powerful sound, and being, like, in front of his amps, like, it's one of those things where he's one of the few people I've played with where he just strums a bar chord, and it's just like, ooh, oh man, that that's a lot of energy behind that. How do you harness so much energy in just like an A chord? And, and then... It's, uh, like I said, it's I wasn't crazy. shading. shading no, no, no. Well, we're not saying you're shading. I'm, I'm just, just saying. so impressed with, with what Tyler is able to do. Like, he, I just, I feel like... As a drummer. He, he yeah. brings the bar up a ton. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I talked to Ryan uh, yesterday and he's like, uh, you know, uh, kind of downplaying himself. Uh, oh, in the band, and I'm I, and I'm much. just like, no, dude, you, We're here you to are. Disappoint. I completely disagree. Yeah, Obviously, that's not that never always disappointed. Impressed. <laughs> always impressed. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, as far as other people, I mean, like, gosh, I'm tempted to go back into the dang vaults for bands that aren't around so much anymore. Are we allowed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, if we're, get, if we're allowed to do like, that, man, bad. I miss Kusa. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Kusa, I miss Kusa bad. No. My first show at Space Camp was with Kusa. Kusa was great. And, and Kusa didn't even stay on my toes. Power on it. Mm. They were oh, Night idea. 
The drummer for Night Idea they, might be the best drummer I've ever heard. They're from Richmond, Ethan. I, well, they're not local. No, they're from Richmond. They're, they're from uh, the art, you know. Well, they're, they're, they're from the state, but, you know. Uh, and yeah. if we're... It's local <laughs> state. Yeah, local state. Not, <laughs> if, we're, if we're digging up skeletons, and I want to say K-Word is definitely one yeah, of my favorite word, word of which, ever. So, and meeting Aaron Parker yeah. and getting to, like... I worked at Aaron Parker's shop for a little while, getting to, like, getting to meet him and work alongside him and being able to just kind of learn through osmosis all a lot of his thoughts around music and how he approaches songwriting was genuinely some of the most, I guess, uh, I guess some of the most formative ways for me making music was mm-hmm. those that year or so I spent working at Enjoyable Noises off and on just because it'd just be Aaron and I listening to music, shooting the shit about what makes this song good? What do we like out of it? What do we don't like? And it was crazy to talk to someone that at the same time, it's like, wow, it feels like similar feeling with yearning where I'm like, oh yes, I'm not alone on this island with what I think about this song, but also having someone with more years of experience and more uh, knowledge of music to be like, oh, well, have you also considered this? That also just got the wheels turning where I'm like, ooh, no, I haven't. I'm going to go home and try that. <laughs> yeah, that's me. My, my answer is, yeah, Aaron Parker, a thousand percent. I saw them the K-Word 2 the reunion show in 2011. Oh, I hate that I missed that. And, you know, I, for like the first three years of high school, I was getting into like, yeah, like early 2000s, post-hardcore and math rock and screaming emo and shoegaze and like, I saw them play and I was like, these guys are from here. Mm-hmm. This was shit that like came out of my city and like, I, I oh, loved yeah. it. And like, again, that was around the same year where I started my band. Like, I can say, you know, the K-word, but it's, like, it's not just the K-word. Like, really, it's, like, I, and and, and, I, and it sounds goofy, because if Aaron ever hears this, he's going to be, like, why are you talking to me like I'm some sort of god? But, like, the range influence that man has had on the scene, like, I can't even imagine. I mean, if, if oh. he's been just an impact on me and Bailey, I mean, he basically kind of inadvertently put a boot in my butt to, like, let's go start making music, because, like, I was proud to be like, yo, you heard the song? Yeah, this came from my city back in 2004. And some people were yeah. like, okay. But I was like, no, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, And it just... So, yeah, I don't know. Like, again, like, all the people that he's ever done stuff with, but it, like, they're definitely in that mix. But, like, mm. just... He is such... A, he's a salt of the earth. He has so much guidance. He has so much experience. But he has so much just passion and love for music and exploring music and not putting yourself in a box and not trying to hold yourself to the confines of what other guitar players or what other musicians might expect or demand you to do. I don't know. It's just something really freeing about that. And like, you know, I think just getting to meet like a lot of people and play in projects and play shows with people who are part of the magical twig, the magic, magic twig collective, like all yeah. those guys, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. what I love about a lot of those people is it, not what they have done is amazing and how, what the sounds they make are great, but it, it's how excited they are to meet younger musicians that yeah, decided they are to yeah. that help them grow and help us grow. And I think like I can sit here and talk about how you know how amazing that like you know some of these these musicians are, but it's just that it's that oh yeah that camaraderie and just that enthusiasm for those and they're still doing stuff. Like, oh yeah what the uh I mean, you've worked with Marshall, you get uh, it. Oh yeah like, I, he I accepts love... you in to yeah. his space with open arms and like I don't know. And I guess I'll see even talking to Kenneth last night like because we, because you, Lucy is fine, bands like Journey, and are here, we feel less alone making spacey oh, chorusy music. Because yeah. we were alone for a while. Like, no, seriously, like when Lucy the Spy put out their demo, I immediately sent it to Ethan and Austin. I was like, guys, guys, check go. us out. We got, so we got to play stuff. with them. This is sick. Yeah. We can now play a band with another band locally. Because it, it would be like some singer songwriter, us, and if another math art band from Richmond was coming through, we'd play with them. And like that was always great, but it would be yeah. like, how it's tended to go but still. It was, Every once in a while, someone weird comes through. So, like, yeah, I don't know. And then, like, I can't have to mention, like, you know, Eternal Summers is definitely, like... Oh, yeah. Like, Jonathan Woods is a big friend of ours. And, I was, you know, I was uh, yeah, uh, watching... I, I was, like, the Bastards of Fate. Like, oh, my gosh, yes, Bastards of Fate. They're, they're one of the classics. I was gonna say, like... Doug like, T. Oh, I love his energy on stage. Well, like, the, uh, I just remember him in the, uh, the, uh, the basement of the bazaar just... Uh, yes. Swinging oh, that, that uh, I miss the bazaar so so much. The best venue with Roanoke. Yeah, I miss the bazaar. I like. I like shout how out to Jamie. Like <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> Doug, love you. Also, shout out to Doug for saying happy birthday to me during his first solo show. Oh, yeah. Yes, he threw a bunch of shrimp at me and then came and like Frankenstein walked to me and like 
like pretty much just like bear hugged me and was just like, "Happy birthday!" That show was. <laughs> yeah. I helped him on stage. You did to, to pass out some shrimp. And we, I almost dropped the hot pot and the shrimp and the skillet. It almost caused a fire. It was very good. But then it fell, and it like probably looked scripted to the audience. It was not. It was not. <laughs> um, I can't fake this stuff. Oh, it was so good. Um, but, but yeah, I get it. It's it, it's it's hard to because I'm not gonna say to be like, oh man, every person who played music and no, but it's but yeah. But a lot of the people, most musicians I've come across in my path in Roanoke, have been really supportive and really enthusiastic. Extremely. Yeah, the majority and, are. are Enthusiastic, kind, cool, fun to talk to, nice people. Yeah, and to bounce off of what Austin was saying earlier, I mean, talk, going going back in time a little bit, talking about Aaron Parker, not only does he have so much knowledge, he also imparts it with so much grace and yeah. so much just humility. Well, I mean, I guess humility to the dumb kid like me asking, like, how did you do this? How does this work? And he just will is so graceful and so patient in all of his answers. And doesn't talk down to you. Never, he tells you well, why and how he did that thing without making it sound like it's you idiot em- exactly yeah, yeah, like, and he's okay. and he knows and it's one of those things where he's not going to sit there and go like oh you need to play it this way it'll be something just be like oh have you like this thing you ever listen to Farrakat you ever listen to Shiner you ever listen to June of 44 and I sit there and I go no he goes like try out a couple of these albums see what you think so he answers <laughs> questions by just going like I'm going to let you figure it out for yourself but here's some source material to draw uh, it Here's an he's an encyclopedia. Yes. Well, okay. And then Austin, for, I wasn't gonna say it because I think I think he would hate it, but I'm gonna do it since Austin broke the seal. Talk about Magic Twig and Eternal Summers, but yeah, getting like uh, Jonathan worked at in uh, Jewel Noise as well. Getting to be around him, he is definitely one of the number one bass players for me in Roanoke. Listening to his work on Golden Stone. That's one of those things where I listened to his bass lines and I was just like, I, how, 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 I wish I could be this good. So uh, it's another one of those things where being around him, being like, okay, getting to pick his brain a little bit, getting to jam with him here and there. Yeah. It was one of those things where it was like him inadvertently just jamming with me just taught me so much about how I wanted to craft a bass line, how I wanted to craft a song, how to approach it, what questions to ask, what to admit, what to add. Yeah, one of those things. See, I knew you would hate it, but yeah, I, see, we're, see, we're, you broke the seal, it. so yeah, we're so, here now. So for I don't know for a second because before I started to like really be confident in my guitar playing, like I kind of considered myself like a synthesizer player first. I remember that. Um, yeah, uh, and right now it's kind of like it's kind of like right neck and neck, but like Jonathan is all, like I don't know how to be considered, but he's a big synth guy too, and I just remember mm-hmm. like. I don't know. He's kind of like a cross between me and you. Yeah, like he really is. Crazy good bass player, but consider himself more of the uh, synth player. But I remember, like, like we, we played a sh- like a show with him and a group he was with called Found Echo, and then like that was awesome. And then like last year, he he went to my place, we jammed, he brought this little keyboard, and like I have never heard someone like pull a keyboard riff out of their ass the way he did, and it sounded it's insane, beautiful and haunting. Oh it was a beautiful and haunting melody, and he had all this like it's long, long delay that's almost looping, and I just remember being like. John, I like it. Like, that's beautiful. Like, I know you probably just improvised that, but like, hmm. h- how? Yeah. And he was just like, you know, and it's like, and I, I get that because sometimes I will bring up a guitar or something. I'll do something. I'm like, that sounds too good for be become for me. But like, yeah. Jonathan is just so good that it's he's not taking it back. Like, oh, I did that. He's just like, yeah, whatever. But it's like, kind of it's kind of funny how you can pull something from the ether. Yeah. Of just it's like, and it's it's like. Somebody, somebody else. It, I'm just channeling, and that's it. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's like, oh, somebody else wrote this, and it's like, no, wait, that was me. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's I, how the best songs feel. Like I feel like a lot of AFG, at least for like my drum part, it it wrote itself. I, I barely oh, yeah. even had any part in it, you know. Oh yeah. So, I guess, uh, are you guys working on an album of any sort, or... Yeah, so, yeah. finish the album. Yeah, we're working on the next story. one, but yeah. we haven't released the one we recorded. Yeah, we, we, we're, like, very close to finishing, like, maybe another EP. Okay. Like, we... Because, like, we wrote, like, kind of, like, three songs, kind of, like, throughout the pandemic, and then, like... And then we had one that we had to rework that would have been on the album, and I think if we bear down, there was a, another one that was, like, almost done, but we had it put on the back burner, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're basically we. I don't know. Yeah, we just we finished the album. 
we just need to be big boys and get it like officially yeah. mastered and then put out and then we'll put all of our stuff on Spotify because if you've looked us up we're not on we're Spotify. Not on, we're not on Spotify. We're not oh on no, the the, uh, the crucial sin. <laughs> yeah. And is it because like I don't want people who listen to that music essentially be giving their money to Taylor Swift when they listen to that music on Spotify? Like slightly. Mm-hmm. And many games easy and great and you yeah. know, make it like I can have some people just download it free if I want to band camp and right. yeah. still at three twenty kilobytes per second. Oh, yeah. As opposed to being like compressed and then decompressed and then compressed and decompressed and compressed again on Spotify like we will be on Spotify. Yeah, we will be on Spotify. It's just we wanted to get that that album done and just move it all over there. And, mm-hmm. wow. and then I guess it'll be another EP. But like we recorded that like cover in our shed, and I don't know if that's exactly how we're gonna do it. We have time to record, but it was so, so I can get better at recording. Maybe it, it, it turned out a lot better than we were expecting because we did it all live. Like it was our fifth, I think. Go yes. fifth, fifth, fifth. Yeah, it was our fifth go that we went for the play yeah. track and. We were surprised at how well and how clean it took. Granted, it yeah. could always be better, but... I brought my recording equipment over, set up the microphone, said, fellas, this is what we got. Let's see what happens. So I'm we have to say, let's just record stuff that way going forward. Like, it sounds good. It's fine. <laughs> I, I was talking to the uh, the mums. They they recently did their... Uh, I think they, they recorded an album, but the, uh, the bass player and their drummer have a... Uh, They have their own setup, so that that they pretty much just recorded it in, uh, I think, in a trailer. So okay, but yeah, so yeah, uh, home home recording is the way to go. I mean, really, I mean, it. I think it gets down to what microphones do you have, and then what knowledge as far as like yeah. compression, EQ. Yeah, I got a decent also, handle. Getting, getting drums right is really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yes, recording. Mm-hmm. That's that's the dang wild variable. It's just hard to. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like over the years, like, I, I don't know. And a lot of it is just being around with other sound, sound engineers like Marshall and stuff mm-hmm. and, like, mic, mic placements. But, like, I feel like all of the DOI, like, drum recordings, like, I, we try to get some Z-Bin or Memphis even and came out pretty cleanly. I remember, like, I, I had to do, like, bad, a, but, but I, it's, it's like, hard to get that, like, okay, but studio, studio-y specific. I, ha- I, I, I had to do a, yeah. like, a promo, I had to do, like, a thing for, for school, I had to do, like, a, like a it was like a random video that was just the, the project and I remember like I made like a fake promo for our like EP and like I don't know if it's out anywhere I feel like it might be it's a, I think it's on the internet so. it's really it's a song that doesn't that does not that does not exist we I might we might actually finish it because it's like someday it, it's like a minute it's like but are you talking about that little promo that's yeah dumb, dumb, but, it, but we were recording yeah, Ethan in our shed and like the yeah. Ethan's drum sound Real good. So There's clean. no good reason for them to sound as good as they did, but they're they're perfect. And I literally just pulled that part out of my. I'll give you that track too. I play. Yeah, listen uh, to uh, this right. loop three times, and I'm like, well, so what? Just like a dum dum, like it just. It, I took two takes. He took the first take. That that'll be the intro song for the for your episode. Just the yeah. That's actually it's kind of perfect for that because it's an intro you link. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get a decent recording of drums with just like a what like a dynamic at the kick drum and then a room mic? Well, I like, learned that you can just straight up put a throw fifty seven above that little hole. Yeah, so right, kick, right in the yeah. And if you don't play like in your right right isn't too shrill, like mm-hmm. I've gotten some okay. That's how that was. Record- no, we did. We did, I think I took a fifty seven on the kick. And I put a fifty seven above the kick. And I just okay. Just there and like I think that's it. it. It's like how how yeah, how. How Too nice the, is microphones, and then like how nice the room is, like mm-hmm. how dead that room is. That room is yeah. dead, and yeah, dead. his acrylic kit sends sound out a little differently than like typical wood kits, and so it's a little bit easier to capture. I think, I think I, that's I do, a good studio kit for sure. It, it, it is easier to capture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then like on our uh, our cover, our mushroom song, I mic that up with one uh, <clears throat> condenser microphone above the kit to grab the toms and the cymbals. Mm-hmm. Put a fifty. I can't afford 57, so I used a 57 knockoff on the kick and snare. And I'm like, all right. But, hey, the knockoffs. The no- you can yeah. get some good stuff out of knockoffs. Yeah. Shout, out, yeah. shout out to GLS Audio for giving me <laughs> yeah. a two for one deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you listen to that recording. I, I think it came out pretty dang well, just sounds wise. I know. Yeah. Just me sending the, my bandmates tracks on Dropbox. Be like, how's this sound? Bring this up. Okay. How's this sound? The toms are too quiet. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that would your cover was spot on, or did, yeah, it was. Yeah, thank you. 
We yeah, tried our best. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed with how it came out. I'm happy with that. The, the dang 5.8 section, I just, that's the part I showed to people. Like, hey, yeah. what do y'all think about the da, 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 Which <laughs> last time went really well. I know, it was really good last night. Yeah. I, I'm, I I'm, I'm glad I'm glad Landon actually got to catch catch that it. That was so good. Yeah. He ran in like after that like Austin saying the first line, I was like oh, he's here, he's here, he's here. He's, he's, he's told me to he's like, I, I'm not gonna be able to make the show, could you film it? I'm like, Yeah, I can oh, do that and then so he, so he did, did he catch our, our cover? Yeah, he did. He caught yeah. pretty much the whole cool, thing, man. Did you not see him run in? No. Yeah, he ran yeah, in. Yeah, he ran in and he was in front of me. He's just like, yeah, dude. And I'm like,
what? <laughs> I get nervous when I put spot and all the lights in my eyes and I have a really oh. bad astigmatism. Oh, oh yeah, you're just like when we performed Jazzy Boy, I was like, I was, and if you're there last night, like I, I Tyler's there and like when when everyone played that song and Tyler's there, and the first time we played that song, Tyler was like came up to us and was like, I don't know what loves it, fucking love the song. So whenever we play that song and Tyler's there, he like gets jazz like. To me, that's Tyler's song, and so like, I would yeah. perform it, and I was like, yo, the song's Tyler, but I couldn't see him, and it's because he was in front of me. Yeah. And the light was red. Yeah. Like, no, like, that was so good. <laughs> there was, I don't know where all Tyler people, is, and he's just sitting there going. Right. All the people, right here, all the people who right get here, right up front, if I remember playing the spot, I will not be able to see you. Right. It's the people who have the sound in the back. Yeah, you're going to need to back up. I mean, yeah. I don't have astigmatism, and I can barely see the people. So, okay, it's, I probably so, have okay. the best view just because the lights aren't directly in my pupils. So that that is what I have noticed because I, I yeah. Well, and honestly, that's how it's always when you're on stage. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it, 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 it makes me feel better because then you can all you see is lights and black. Yeah, and when I did because I did theater for like a decade, um, that's how it was for me too. It was like and if the lights were on, mm -hmm. and, I, and I just put my eyes in the back of. Of like the wall back there. That's all I need. There could be a hundred people in the room. There could be one. It doesn't matter. You know, yeah, because as far as I know, it's always lights black and look at the wall. Yeah. Like I might be able to see if I look at a course of five minutes. You know, like I would be able to see some of the people in the back of the stage. But like, again, like if I'm performing for fifty versus three hundred, like I'm still gonna put the same intensity. Too, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know. Uh. So, what is your next gig? Our next October gig. October second. Our very next gig is October second at the Coffee Pot. And our gig after that, which is on the poster, so I think we can announce it. First. It's October 21st at the spot with Eternal Summers. And. Woo! Oh, what is the out of town band? Is it Carlos Truly, I believe. I took a picture of the flyer, so I need to double check. But October 2nd with Orange Culture at the Coffee Pot, yeah. and then October 21st at the spot on Kirk with Eternal Summers. How do you guys like playing the coffee pot? Have you never played we've never played yeah. before? Yeah. So really? You know, yeah. it, it's because this is our first time. Back to the earlier, like when we first started playing music, the coffee pot was kind of where all the punk and metal bands go. It's, it's mm -hmm. just, so they didn't want a punk and metal band, so we didn't try. It, didn't ask for us, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and again, there's no animosity. It was just no. Like, well, they, uh, it, yeah, like we didn't want to make anyone feel weird trying I, sure. to book us. So we just after, really after playing it. there, it's uh, uh, this is my personal thought. I don't. I don't know if the art, I don't think the current owners know what they have because it's, you look on the wall and it's like, oh, is that Willie Nelson? Oh, sh you know, it, uh, right. yeah. you got so many people who have come through there that just, you wouldn't think it, but yeah. Like actual enormously famous people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just play at the coffee pot. I, I just saw that there's a Wikipedia page for the coffee pot. I was sure, like, yeah, yeah, there is a yeah. Wikipedia page for Coffee Pot. Like, it's whatever, you know, one of the classic road houses in America. That's fine. So I like, didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, was, it, was it you that was telling me that essentially the Coffee Pot was there before there was even a, like, it was a dirt road? Yeah. Yeah, that's like the, the yeah. first building there. That's like one of the first there. pictures on that Wikipedia page. It's just the Coffee Pot, pretty much as you know it today, and it's a dirt road, like, with horses and carriages. Mm -hmm. That's Wow. It's, it's like the oldest yeah. building in that area there. Yeah. Dang, now it feels yeah. like an honor. Dang, we're we're part of a long legacy now. Oh, yeah. sure. That's kind of a smoke inhalation. But it, right. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very smoky in there. Uh, the last smoking thing you so you in have in an Virginia. Uh, we uh, we played this. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, me and Ryan played a, a show down in uh, Charlotte, uh, and it was uh, the Milestone Club. Mm -hmm. oh, and Scotty told us about that. Oh. It's been open since I think '69. Yeah, sheesh. and like everybody has been in there. Like I mean, like from Nirvana to you know the police, the police. Yeah, like, with them. They're like, yeah, we're playing this place called the Milestone Club. Nirvana. It's, it's right like yeah. It, yeah, it's so many people. It's crazy. Yeah, not yeah. the greatest part of town, but is that the venue was amazing. I was just like, this is this is kick ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but. uh yeah. Uh. So, I guess you get. Uh, well, I guess your re uh, latest release would be the uh, the mushroom song. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess technically. Latest release. I guess technically. For technically. Sure. It doesn't quite feel like it because we made like we put like two of our like not officially released stuff from our album onto an EP we sell physically. Mm -hmm. So if 
people want songs that don't exist digitally, like come to the coffee pot, come to the coffee, <laughs> coffee, coffee pot, second, or, that's, that's how or, just, or just hit us up online because like we're proud of them and like the songs that are on there, like they, yeah, they're it's good stuff. They're good stuff. Like we're, we're quite happy with it. We're, we're quite happy with it, and I think like when we finally drop the rest of the album, you'll be happy too. But yeah, it's, uh, so is uh, do you have an do you have a date in mind for the album? Or oh, no. I, 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 I don't want to say anything because <laughs> if I say like yeah, like this date, like here, let's it's, obligate ourselves to a date right now. Uh, what's October the date? October fifth. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We we just need to just two weeks from now. You heard it here. Yeah, and yeah. Just, <laughs> and the thing is, like, like, it just we're we're it's like ninety. It just needs because, like, yeah. it just and, 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 and and like not like and even oh, then it's like we're not even like oh we need this crazy master it's like we just need it a little bit louder we need louder that's it well the thing is is like I've already done all of like the album art work for it like yeah. the whole like like the CDs like like when I like the mastering is all that's left like I, I did like a portfolio project right I did like a fake box set for Lost in Space Camp but of course this album was coming out and the EP after was also coming out so like all that's done so it's really just like. Just getting mastered the way that you know we, we want it to be heard, and you know yeah. how Marshall had left it with us was like that's how we wanted to sound. It just yeah, I gotcha. Well, fellas, awesome. um, I don't have anything else. Yeah. Do you have what a pleasure else? talking with you guys today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. this was fun. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised Thank you guys. didn't ask about like the giant giant pedalboard. Okay. Yeah, oh no. Yeah. I look, oh, okay. Let's go. go. Oh god. We're, okay. Yeah. Well, let's go into gear right. talk. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 I just feel <laughs> like there's, there's definitely like a few well, questions I, you haven't asked. I gotta talk okay. about my pedals. <laughs> well, no, but like people who might listen to this who might see us. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, cool. They're definitely a question. Yeah. You do have. Just, you do have a point no, there. That no, is. We, don't, we shouldn't answer it. They should come to the show. But they can look at the pedal board themselves. What? Look. Look. Look at the pedal board and then go and talk to you guys. Yeah. All right. You guys are very friendly. I play with two very large pedal boards. Um, oh, no. if, you want, if, you, if you want to come look at <laughs> no, if you want to come look at the pedal board and ask me questions about each pedal on the pedal board, I will gladly answer you about my signal chain, the signal flow, why I like what I do, why I have six delays on my board, why Bailey has a bunch of effects. Like we I will regretfully answer any about. and all questions since Austin has contractually obligated yeah. me to it now. <laughs> I love talking about effects. I, I've written a, a little a contract here. No, it's, hold yeah. on, I'm working on it. <laughs> love talking about I, I don't know. It yeah, is honestly it's honestly a really cool thing to talk about with people who know effects because they love talking about effects, but for people who have never seen that stuff before. It's difficult to talk to someone who hasn't seen it. Like, the... Like, if when they look at the Empress ecosystem and go, What's that? I'm like, This is gonna take a while, man. Are but you ready? if you come see us play live and you're like, Yo, what was that thing that went? And you're like, Oh man, it was this exactly. thing. Exactly. Like, if yeah. I just tap it down once and it captures like up to 5.2 seconds of sound, and that's mm. what I used to go as the Boss E6, which is the best boss delay that's ever been released, in my opinion. Yeah, the switches Ooh. keep breaking on us. Except yeah. the switches keep breaking on us. Boss, yeah, like, boss you know. This, this is why I'm a drummer. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like I have two pedals. And hate, those pedals will you know exactly what they do. This one closes. Like, yeah, no I'm one's asking, asking about it. it. <laughs> don't yes. ask me any questions about gear. I don't know anything. I'm a bad gear person. We'll go to the yeah, airport. They, they think they're bombs. Just going to let you know that. Yeah, oh, I, I'm, yeah, okay. I'm sure. Yeah, it's uh, the uh, when when Bailey here covered for bass uh, a few weeks ago uh, for Lucy. Uh, I, we had pedal. Well, honestly, Wes and Jason both had. Well, and myself had both. It's like, wow, that is a, that is a, an amazing pedal board, and yeah. I know I have He's, way too much. I have more pedals than any bass that should ever use, but I got them. Hey, you know. I always like. I don't know, man. I think you could have a dedicated course pedal on there. So, mm -hmm. I am one who's like, I don't know, Bailey. What, what if you had a pedal board that was even larger? You know, delay so you on the bass. Pedal? You know. Well, it was big. It's just I. He has enough pedals to make it larger if he wanted. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. See, the thing is, I pro. Oh, I hate it. I hate saying this. I probably own. Oh God, I think I own three hundred. No, it's not in triple digits, but <laughs> it's high. It's high up there in double digits of pedals. I only ever use eight at a time. For me, I I don't know. I 
I value efficiency, so whenever I get a pedal, I want something that will do everything at the touch of a button, which is why I have something like the Echo system. So what you're saying is Ethan has a drum cage, you have a pedal cage. Correct. <laughs> no. Yes. I I have I have pedals that will cover many bases and I'm like, yes. Many many bases. Many bases. Many bases. Four string, oh. five string, six string, all the eight bases. string, eight string bias. I do have an A string. Big mouth bass. Oh, yeah. I do. I don't know if it's ever gonna like officially be used in yeah. yeah. performance. Just like the neck is like crazy wide, right? It's gotta be. You know, it is, but it's not as wide. It's, it's not as really, unwieldy as you think. Yeah, it looks ridiculous, but like mm-hmm. it's a thin neck. And, it doesn't like, feel ridiculous at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing this thing where I was like tuning it like my tuning, but like having yeah. it be a low G. Mm-hmm. Just top string the bass and the high, yeah. high G, so it was going lower and higher than the guitar, and it was going wild, pretty pretty great for a while. But uh, the top string broke, and I've had to replace it twice. Mm-hmm. I can't tune up that high on that guitar, mm-hmm. so I'm sure the beast. I'm going back to probably just doing like G D G D G A D C. Um, yeah, that's how it was for I a need, while. I need five D strings I, separated by one string. I got it so I could play just like hyper jazz throughout the pandemic. I like got it like right at the very beginning of the pandemic, and I love I do love it. The pickups are terrible, but like if I have it going through like um I have a Hemel Struts Feta, which is a really weird kind of underground, just like overdrive that's like a Swedish company. Oh, uh, so mm-hmm. you probably haven't heard it. No, it's great. Well, no, in the early 2000s, that's where all like the Blues dads were like, man, fuck the Timmy, I'm getting a pedo. And like, because I yeah, was, it was like, fun to see the ultimate guitar post about that. Yeah, and, like, from 2008 to 2009. Because, like, I didn't really, yeah, I don't know. But, like, I have to have that on as, like, a preamp sound yeah. for that guitar to sound good. But, like, if I don't play it in, mm-hmm. I just strum it, it sings. So it's, I mean, as if you're listening to this, like, Sponsor. great guitar, Sponsor sponsored us. us. But, like, I've been using your bass for a while. Please, drum, please, also vinyl. please put, like, some sort of, like, lower end Fisher pickups in that guitar. Because, like, that's all it needs. It's just better pickups. Just, just better pickups. Oh, yeah. You could almost. Which, exactly. Yeah. You would think that, like, the, the, the downside of having an eight string would be, like, having an eight string in the neck, the not being, like, not, no tuning stability, but, like, no, it's, it's just the pickups just sound kind of, like, like, unless you're playing high gain the entire time. Mm. Or you have some sort of something to make it sound like a, gotcha. it's flabby sounding. It's I just, mean, like, it, yeah, I, most definitely. It, uh, with, it's amazing how, uh, like, with, like, tuning pegs. Believe it or not, a tuning peg, you would not, uh, you wouldn't think it, but essentially, it can change just a, a, just a oh. tiny tweak. Oh, yeah. And it's, oh, this is better, or, you know. It's, yeah, no, like, yeah, like, the, the, the tension's, like, yeah. not supposed to be. But, yeah, don't, don't think about that. RG8 is just, man, the pickups kind of sound like plastic. That's just, they sound, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to describe it. Like, yeah, it's just, just cheap sounding. it's not sterile good, it's just, like. That seems to be an eyeglass thing. That base I have for the EMGs. There is just a touch of sterility. Sounds like it, I describe hospital it as a hospital. Tone. Yeah, hospital, hospital tone. Hospital mm-hmm. clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, with some preamp sounds and some compression, like, if you run that to an orange amp, you get a little grid yeah. on it, everything's fine. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, well, now that that aside, Boston Space Camp. Now that we had to talk right. about, yeah, yeah. Had to talk about it had to be a gear. December. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> genuinely our fourth member. It is, uh, it's, and it's a founding member. Come see us okay. to October second at the Coffee Pot and October twenty first, so you can dig our pick our brains about what pedals we use. Yeah, talk talk cool. to me about like how I hit symbols, and that's literally all that I can talk say to Ethan about delay pedals, guys. The, it, yeah, I dare you. I dare talk you. to Austin and I about hi-hat stands. Talk to Ethan about delay pedals. Talk to Ethan about, like, <laughs> post-hardcore music from the year 2013, and we're good. Oh, yeah. Well, fellas, uh, thank you so much. I guess, yeah. That's a wrap. Perfect. That's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much thank for having you guys. us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Signing off. Signing off. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, listeners. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye.